in this nitty gritty basics let's play live stream we're going to be playing american mahjong at i love maj i love maj has the ability for you to play with robots which is wonderful because you can practice you can also play with people humans friends but we're going to focus on the exercise room at first because there are some features in there that we can take advantage of. Today's topic is planning discards. So we're going to practice planning discards. We'll probably do Charleston modeling just to kind of do a recap on hand development during the Charleston. And then we'll play with robots so we can talk about simplifying decision making with planning discards. If you are new to my channel, thank you so much for watching my videos. Please consider subscribing. Also, if you are a channel member, thank you so much for helping support Maj Life. And also moderators, thank you so much for helping moderate the chat today. We're doing a no socialization format so we can dig into the nitty gritty. I'll go ahead and share my screen so that we can get started with a very short presentation and then we'll play Mahjong. Welcome. Thanks for being here. So I'm going to, to, oh, let me get the slideshow going first. Here we go. All right, let me just double check my sound. Okay. Hi, Kathleen, welcome. All right, so planning discards. <clears throat> the first thing, of course, that you're gonna do when you get your dealt tiles is identify the strength of the hand. That's the number one, that's the first step is identifying the strength of the hand. And that's going to be based on whether or not you have multiples, because that should come first. Multiples should drive the decision. It should drive the direction that you go. That is the multiples are the deciding factors, because in the end, you're going to need multiples. Every hand on the card uses them. So if you target multiples and start there, then you're going to set yourself up for success, because in the end, you're going to need them. So start early. Start strong by targeting multiples. If you don't have multiples, you're going to target the predominant pattern, which will be one of the categories on the card that will use most of your tiles. Focus on the category that uses most of your tiles until a multiple forms. When a multiple forms, you're going to reassess, target the multiple, and then confirm the category because it could change based on what happens during the Charleston. So once you focus on a category, whether you have multiples or just the predominant pattern, then you're going to identify unwanted tiles. Those will be your discards. And we're going to talk about that. We'll look at an example hand as it goes through the Charleston with passes. And then, of course, we're going to do it live at I Love Maj. So here we go. Here's a hand. We have East South Dragon, Green Dragon, Pair Three Bam, Seven Bam, Six Nine in Cracks, Two Three, Six Nine in Dots with a pair of twos. So our multiples are the Three Bam and the Two Dot. So we're going to look at the rest of our tiles and decide which tiles we can keep that will then use most of our tiles and we'll play a category based on that assessment. So in this case, we have mostly three, six, nine. Sometimes you're gonna have a multiple that won't work for the majority of your other tiles. So you wanna maximize your, your potential by using most of your tiles. And then you're gonna optimize by targeting the multiple. So the two dot in this case, even though it is a multiple, we only have 
two, three dot and a three BAM, we would have way more discards if we focused on two, three. Now, this could change. I mean, if, for example, in the Charleston, if you get fours, you could change to a two, three, four hand and use both multiples. But starting out in this case, three, six, nine is the predominant pattern using one of the multiples. So what you could do is you could say, all right, let's play three, six, nine, and maybe use the twos for joker bait. And in that case, these would be the useless tiles. Joker bait with seven bam, green dragon, east and south. Those would be the useless tiles. Joker bait would be useful, maybe, depending on what happens. And then the useless tiles thereafter would be your discards. So you target the strength of the hand, whether it be multiples or the predominant pattern. Choose a category that uses most of your tiles supporting the multiple. Then identify the useless tiles to help you with your passing. There goes Riley. Um, no, don't even. No. Okay, so we're going to play at I Love Mosh now, and we'll do some live examples. So let me stop sharing. And Riley has figured out how to open the French doors in our back room, so I can't put him away. Uh, let's see. I need to get door stoppers to keep him from busting through the doors. So bear with me if he barks. I apologize. All right. So here, here's I Love Maj. Hi, Karen. Here's I Love Maj. And we have the game launch pad. I've already locked in, logged in. We could play with robots. We'll do that in just a little bit. But I want to do at least one round of, actually, you know what? We need to assess the Charleston. We need to assess the strength of the hand and practice the Charleston even if we play a game. So let's just go into playing a game. And so in the game launch pad, you can choose the level of experience with your robots. We're going to play at, uh, experience, at the intermediate experience. So they're going to be intermediate level players, these robots. So here we go. And I think we'll use this this layout here. Okay, so we're going to click start. And here are the tiles that we have to work with. Let's just check out the lay of the land here or see what we have to work with. We have a flower, a south, a pair of green dragons, a white dragon, then we have one, five, seven in cracks, pair five, three, five, seven in dots, pair three. So when you look at these tiles, you're going to target the multiples and we have multiples. So whatever we play, we're going to try to use as many multiples as we have in this starting dealt hand as possible. So we have five crack, three dot green dragon. We might be able to use all three of those if we get the right tiles. It would be basically for the fifth hand down under odds. That would allow us to use all the multiples. But I would probably hold, let's see here, maybe the two and the white dragon. White dragon. We might be able to play like numbers with threes, like numbers with fives, maybe the two can go. I was thinking maybe we could do a year hand, but we have a pair of threes. So you want to go through this process of elimination and set yourself up for success by choosing a category that will use most of your multiples. We have five discards that we could probably get us going into the Charleston. And with every incoming pass, we'll have excuse me, we'll have more tiles to use to help us with the decision making. So let's discard south, then the one crack, and then maybe the seven dot. So we're focused on three, five, maybe like numbers. 
So maybe little odds or like numbers. Okay, now here we got a one dot and we have tiles we can pass. If we're focused on little odds, here's a four though. If we get a two dot, we might be able to do two, three, four, five. So let's keep the four crack. You wanna to try to keep as many tiles as you can to optimize your potential to develop a hand, but you still need to identify tiles that you can pass. With a three dot and a five dot, I'm focused on those more so than the dragon because the dragon is really only useful in one hand in the odd category. And the dragons in consecutive run are one suit. So we're not gonna be able to use the dragon in, in consecutive run. And we won't be able to use the dragon in odds unless we play that fifth hand down. So that leaves us with probably, actually we could probably even use that, one, uh, that flower because uh, the flower and the white dragon for that fourth hand down. And still we didn't touch the two bam, the seven crack and the six crack. So those would be our discards. So we're gonna let those go. And we're optimized for little odds, basically, I'd say. We got the three crack. I would let the four go at this point because we actually have a hand in here with no gaps that would use all of our multiples. One, three dot, green dragon, three crack, five crack. This is the fifth hand down under little odds. We have three discards. We really don't even have to pick a hand yet. If we don't want to, we can wait because we have tiles we can pass. Okay, we have another keeper here and another keeper with the green dragon. Look at this. Okay, now we have to make a choice. We're at the place where we can stop the Charleston if we want but we're in between. If you are in between hands or in between categories, in this case, we're in one category, we're in odds, little odds to be specific, but we're in between hands. We can either play the fourth hand down, one, three, five dragon, or we can play one, three dot, three, five crack with green dragons. This would be the fifth hand down. So if you're in between, don't stop the Charleston. Pick the strongest option and keep going because you're really just delaying the inevitable by stopping the Charleston because you're going to have to pick a hand anyway in the next pass because you're going to do the optional across if the player across from you participates because more likely than not, they're not going to. They're going to decline, which is a smart tactic because if we're this close to a hand, I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect someone to give us more tiles. So don't take that personally if someone declines an optional. In this case, we're still at the point where we have to make a choice. So since we're in between, we're going to pick the strongest option and we're going to keep going. So we have, if we played, let's say, the fourth hand down, we have a one dot that needs to be a calm. So that would be pretty weak. Then we have a three dot pair, which is full. We've got that covered. And, and then we have a five dot that needs to be a Kong. So, so that is also weak. And we have a, one, a white dragon that needs to be a pair. And that's another weakness. The flower also needs to be a pair. So we have one, two, three, four weaknesses, but it's a hand with no gaps. No gaps, four weaknesses, one dot, five dot, white and flower, four weaknesses. So now let's look at the other option that we have, which is one, three dot, Kong of Dragons, three, five in cracks. We have no gaps, more tiles, and one weakness with the one dot, because that needs to be a pair. We can Kong or Pung the three dot, Kong the three or the green dragon. We just need a little help with our three crack and we have our pair of fives. So we have two weaknesses. That is the, 
that is the strongest option. So we break up the other hand and keep going in the Charleston. Bottom line, keep going. So we're going to continue. So south, white, and five dot. Now, I normally don't pass white dragons, but in this case, I would because we have a pretty strong hand. If we can get a one dot, I would have no, no concerns about. Now, it's not a guarantee because we don't know what's going to happen with the with the game as it progresses but if we have a pretty strong chance of winning here so let's pass we got a two dot which is a little bit interesting but don't be distracted by consecutive run we have a hand with no gaps so we should focus on that it's okay to commit to a hand in the charleston if you have that much development going on for whatever hand you're considering. I would pass the two with the six and the nine. Two, six, nine, as opposed to the five, I think. All right, here we go. So we have a one bam east and a four, really not helpful at all. So we can let those go. Okay, we have a four, five south dragon. We don't need those at all. We can pass fully. Okay, we're done with the Charleston. We have four, uh, five discards, including a flower. I typically don't pass flowers. And we have a hand with no gaps, two weaknesses, the one dot and the three crack. I would say with five discards, we're probably going to be a contender because we are the dealer. We're east, so we have an extra tile. We're going to start the game by discarding, which leaves us with four discards. If you have four discards, you're likely a contender for that game. We're ready to call the three dot if it's discarded for a pung, and we can call a green dragon if it goes down for a Kong. So we need a little bit of help with our three crack, and of course, it'd be nice if we can get a one dot. You gotta be able to envision where the hand can go, but don't let weakness stop you from, that, from realizing that vision go with it because everybody is going to be in the same position. Everybody is going to have to develop the hand. It's very rare that you have a fully developed hand during the Charleston. Very rare. So I think we're in a pretty good spot. Let's see how this goes. So the way that I look at my discards and plan my discards is I look at my discards. So right now we have a flower we don't need. We have a five dot that could be used with little odds. One, three, three, five. We could even maybe play that second hand down, but we have a, a pung of dragons there. So that five dot potentially could have use, but probably not. The two, clearly useless. The nine, clearly useless. So those I would discard first. The nine BM would go first, then the two, and then finally probably the five dot at times we might have an opportunity to do a joker exchange with a flower if your opponents are assertive let's say assertive as opposed to aggressive so if there are assertive players at the table they may make an exposure with flowers and jokers so that's why i would hold the flower for just a little bit so let's see what happens. We don't want dra that dragon. Excuse me. We don't want that dragon. We're good there. Okay, now here's a six crack. I would keep that for a little while because the in the middle tiles, four, five, six, those are going to be more likely in exposures with jokers than edge tiles, like this nine ban. So I would let that go. Tiles on the edge can go first if you're not using them. In this case, seven, eight, nine, let's say. Okay, so clear. it seems nobody's playing wins. Here's another nine. That can go. It's on the edge. We can let it go. Nobody wants it anyway. Okay, there's, all right, now seven. Here's a seven. We can let that go. We're looking for one, three, five. Okay, now 
Here's an exposure with a joker. Always look for opportunities to do a joker exchange. There's a seven. And we probably should keep an eye on what's happening with the five and the six because this player with a seven might want the five and the six. So let's just see what happens. No, nope, that's not our tile. Here's a three BAM. Let's see here. Oops. You might think to yourself, okay, well, what about if we play two, three dragon? You could do that. And you might even be able to play that hand, but you'd have to throw away two pair. Multiples are powerful in American Mahjong. It's a game of multiples. So we're better off to play with the three and the five than we are with single two, three and the matching dragon. It looks really pretty, but it's not strong at all. It's weak compared to what we have with multiples. So try not to be distracted by one suit. Let's let the six crack go first. Okay, there it is. You see that? Punk Kong. They wanted that six crack, which means we probably should let this five dot go next because they could be doing, let's say, four, five, six, seven. Maybe they're doing six, seven, eight, nine. We won't know. But this five dot, they might want that, especially because there's a five bam out. So look at the discards to help you decide what to let go of. And also look at the exposures. Okay, seven dot. They could be playing six, seven, six, seven. Let's let the seven go. Okay. Okay, there's an eight bam pong to the left, a two bam. Nobody wanted it. Let's let this five dot go. There it is, five dot. So they're doing four, five, six, seven. So a four dot is going to be super risky with three exposures. There's a, a Kong with the Joker. Okay, let's let the six BAM go. Okay, well, there's a two BAM, but it was already discarded right up here. Nobody wanted it. There's a two crack to the right. I think I would discard this three because we don't know yet what this player to the right is doing. We don't want to hold on to that three for very long. This player on the left, they have an eight bam pong with the, the dragons that are out. I doubt they're playing that two eight dragon hand, second hand from the bottom under two, four, six, eight. I doubt they're playing that hand because there's a couple of jokers out or not jokers, but dragons. Even the red dragon they would need. So I don't, I think they're playing something consecutive here, like eight, nine, eight, nine, or maybe five, six, seven, eight, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's see, six, seven, eight, nine would work there too. So let's just see. We'll hold the two for a little bit. I think the three dot or three bam here would be probably the best. Maybe, maybe we could do the six crack because now that's a, a multiple here. We could maybe play that third hand down under consecutive run. Let's keep the two and let the six go. Okay. So they're doing eight, nine, eight, nine, but they could also be doing the second hand from the bottom under consecutive run. Basically, it would be six, seven, and dots, pair, pair. There's already a seven dot out. Two crack joker exchange. Thank you. Okay, now we have to make a choice. One, three, dragon, three, five. I think that's what I would play because we can pung both threes now, Kong the green, and we'd be ready to win on the, on the one. So in your mind, you can kind of map out how the hand can develop to see how what would need to happen to get it to Mahjong versus two, three dragon, we'd have to throw away two pair. So now we know the flower, two bam and three bam are discards. So at 70 tiles remaining, I don't think anybody's gonna want this two bam. Although this player to the right, 
I suppose they could be trying for a like number hand or one, two, one, two. Let's let the three go or maybe the flower. Let's let the flower go first. Okay. All right. Now here's our tile. We can pum. Let's let the two bam go now. Nobody wanted it. Oh, we got a winner now. Four, five, six. To the right, they were doing one, two, three, four, pong, 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 one discard. And then on the left, six, seven, eight, eight. They have an extra six and a green dragon there. So I think that we were a contender with these players. We maybe were, this player to the right was a little further with their hand than us. But, and then this player to the left, they needed a lot more flowers. So I think we did okay there. Does anybody have any questions about that particular hand? Otherwise, we're going to do the next game. I guess we'll go ahead and start. I don't see any questions. Okay, we have this time a pair of sevens. When you scan your, your tiles, target the multiple and let that be the start. So we can know right now, whatever we do, we're going to use the seven. So the seven bam we'll start with. Now, what else can we keep? What else can we keep with the rest of our tiles? And I would say the six dot and the eight bam or eight dot. Maybe the five, five, six, seven, eight. The seven bam with the dragon, not so much. East and west, we might be able to play news concealed. If we get other wins and the eight dot or the six dot, we do have some consecutive in here, six, seven, eight with wins. And that leaves us with enough tiles to do the Charleston. So let's pass a three with maybe the one bam and a four dot. Okay, what do we have? Seven dot. Six crack. We've got a lot of five, six, seven, eight. We don't have to pick a hand. We don't even have to look at the card. We have discards. We have a three bam that clearly can go, a red dragon that clearly can go, and now we make a choice. So you don't have to make a decision or you look at the card and pick a hand or whittle down options until you run out of discards, which is where we're at now, because we have all keepers at the moment. If we consider the news concealed hand, we could also maybe play a five, six, seven, eight consecutive run hand, which is probably what I would do. I would probably play a five, six, seven, eight number hand and let one of the wins go. So maybe let's say the West. Because if we do go back to that noose concealed hand, we would only need to recover with one tile. At the moment, we have a gap, no north. So to help you make the decision on which to play noose concealed in this case, or maybe the consecutive run category as a whole, look for gaps. If you have a gap, go with the option with no gaps. We have no gaps with a run of five, six, seven, eight. Now we don't know what hand we're playing yet, but we have a good number of tiles that we can use with four, five, uh, five, six, seven, eight. So I would play consecutive run in this particular hand. So now we have another multiple, the eight dot. Anytime a new multiple forms, you're going to reassess. So we have seven, eight in two, two multiples. So we're at this place now where we need to make a choice because we have really, let's see, with a seven, we have a flower. We could do, let's say, for example, seven, bam, eight dot, nine crack, or six crack, I suppose. Six, seven, eight, mixed suit cons, fifth hand down under consecutive run. Fifth hand down on the right. Or we could do seven, bam, 8.9 crack, and the flower. We could maybe do 
five, six, seven, seven. Sixth hand down, we would need to keep the seven dot and we would keep, of course, the flower. The eight dot would be Joker B, probably. So let's say we keep all those because they're the, there are a couple of options there. And that means that we would have tiles that we could potentially pass. Now, this is going to be a little bit risky. We could maybe pass, let's say, east south with a six. This is a bit risky. Two wins. And we have a couple of hands with no gaps, but they're very weak. For example, if we played the second hand down, we need a Kong of flowers and we have only one. That's a big weakness. We have a single five, six. Both need to be pairs. Two more weaknesses, so we're at three. We have a seven band that we could pung, and we have a seven dot. That's the fourth weakness. So we have four weaknesses for the second hand from the bottom. Six hand down under consecutive run. If we played seven, eight, nine, we would have three week, three week, we're really four weaknesses. So it's equal. Four weaknesses because seven, eight, nine, or six, seven, eight needs to be Kongs. And we have singles and two pair. Plus the flower needs to be a pair. So you look for gaps and you, uh, you identify the weaknesses and you choose, you make your choice based on the fewest weak weaknesses possible. So I think if this were me, I would rather see if wins come through. And this is a bit risky. Wins did come through in the first two passes. We may see them again, and we may be able to play seven, eight with wins. So let's just pull these together and see what we're left with. We have four discards and it would allow us to pass defensively instead of passing two wins. So also consider your options and the potential to mitigate risk. So I would play news with seven, eight. We've got our singles. We have a gap, no north, but we can use jokers. So, and I know you can use that same argument with our weaknesses, at least a couple of them. I think I would pass five, nine, six and try for news with seven, eight. So let's see. Let's see how it goes. We got an east. Here's a six, seven. We're going to keep going. We have a one that can go. Really, this east is not very helpful because for the concealed hand, we only need a single. And we have six, seven, eight, all six, seven, eight. Here's seven, eight, six, seven, six, east. I probably would let the east go. And then probably the seven. We could still play six, seven, eight, mix suit Kongs here. Six crack, seven band, eight dot flower. So let's see what we can do here. We have the five crack back. So now we're right back where we were. Five, six, seven, seven flower, six hand down. Or we can do still news with seven, eight. With either of those options, we didn't use these two tiles. So we have to come up with one tile to let go of. I think what I would do here, hmm, six, seven, eight. I think I would let the five go because we have an option in here with no gaps. Six, seven, eight, mixed suit Kongs with the flower. Fifth hand down on the right under consecutive run. There's the north. Now we have no gaps. So that's what I would go for. News with seven, eight. We still might even see more wins. North and south would be ideal. Okay, not this time, but we do have six, seven, eight. Now we have options for north and south or east and west with six, seven, eight. 
second hand down, two options. I think what I would do here, because the six dot and the seven dot were going around, I would pass two. I know we're in between, but because of what was going around in the Charleston, I think we can just pass two. Uh, we didn't get any keepers, but that's okay. All right. I would probably we're let's see we have a these are probably just six dot okay nine crack so. We're looking for a seven bam eight dot news concealed under winds. Uh, let's let the eight bam go. Okay, that's our top, but we're, we're concealed. Oh, flower. All right, now this is where you want to reconsider. Anytime that you're you develop a new multiple, reconsider. Probably I would keep the six crack, even though one is out. We could maybe use the flowers with six, seven, and eight. So I would probably keep the flowers for a little bit and discard six, seven. It could be, it could be me. Um, is anybody else having issues with my voice? Let's let the seven dot go. Okay, we're good. I'm still hoping for news concealed. We don't need a dragon. We're good there. So keep an eye on discards. It's glitching for you too. All right, uh, let's see here. Hold on one second. It, it resolves quickly. Okay, let's just wait a little bit. Okay, let's let the nine bam go. Okay. Okay, now that's our tile if we're playing an exposable hand. Fifth hand down on the right. We don't, we can't call it though. So we need to just let it go. We're good there. Since the six dot just went down, we can let that go. So you can simplify decision making based on what gets discarded. If one of your tiles is discarded, you can just discard that next because nobody wanted it in that particular case. Or maybe you have the tile in your hand and somebody calls it for a Kong, you can let it go or maybe use it as a joker exchange. Eight crack. No, we don't need that. We're good there. We need keepers. A one bam. We don't need that. Okay, there's a joker up for grabs right there on the left. There's a joker on the right. Okay, so we have a four or five Pung Kong there. They're pushing. That's another tile for us, but we can't call it either way. We're probably playing a concealed hand. Here's our joker exchange. Always look for that opportunity to do a joker exchange. So maybe we can use that for the eight. We still don't have to pick a hand because we've got discards. Okay, there's a north. That's a new multiple. So we're still in between. We have a four band we can let go of. So we're going to need to make a choice. Now, if we play six, seven, eight, mix suit Kongs with a pair of flowers, we don't need that because we just need a pair and we already have it. We're concealed if we play news with seven, eight. We don't need the nine either way. So we still don't have to pick a hand. 
we're most, oh, there's our winner. So most likely we're playing that concealed hand. All right, let's go again. Is my sound coming across okay? All right, here we go. We have a flower. Here's a north pear. If we can hoard winds, we might be able to use that north. I would look at the rest of my tiles where we don't have any multiples with number tiles. And number tiles are more useful than winds. So I would look for a plan B in case winds don't come through in the Charleston. So here I would look for maybe runs, consecutive runs, like we have a three, four, two, three, four. We have a lot of two, three, four. We also have some two, four, six, eight, and we also have some year potential. So if we think about that, the clear discards would be what we didn't mention in our head. Of course, we're, we're thinking about this in our head when we're at the table. We're not going to say these things out loud. But if we play evens, we don't need a seven and a nine. If we play two, three, four of some kind, we don't need a seven and a nine. If we play a year hand, we don't need a seven and a nine. So we need to come up with one tile to pass. Okay, thank you, Karen. Um, hold on one second. Let me see. I might be able to do something to help. One second. Okay, let's see. I, I stopped a process in the back in the back. So let me share my screen again. Can you hear me okay? Okay, good. The voice is good. Okay, good. Here we go. All right. So if these were if this were if I were playing this game. I probably would let the Norths go. Even though that is a multiple, we can do far more with number tiles. Because we have no other wins, the North is useless. But we have the potential for 2468 and 234 consecutive run. So I would let the North go in this case. Sometimes multiples are not the answer, sometimes the predominant pattern is stronger. And that's the case here because we have no other wins. So we're going to let the North go and we're going to focus on number tiles. We could play a year hand, we could play two, four, six, eight, or we could play some form of two, three, four. We have a one. So there's some one, two, three, four now. Here's a six dot and an eight crack. Okay, now here is where I would reassess completely. We have a new multiple the eight crack, I would just start over. I would wipe the slate clean, start with the eight. American Mahjong is a game of multiples. That is where you what you target, start with the eight. So what can we do with an eight? We don't need the north, we can let that go for sure. We probably could even let that white dragon go. The one, you can't use a one with an eight, so that can go. So now we only need one more tile, to continue the Charleston. Clearly, we're playing a two, four, six, eight hand. So the three would be the clear discard. So you use a process of elimination and gather the tiles that will support your multiple or whatever the strength of the hand is, whether it be the multiple or the predominant pattern, to reveal the useless tiles. In this case, the useless tiles are going to be the three dot and then probably the white dragon, maybe. We do have a two, two crack. We could maybe play two eight dragon, but we have no green dragon. So either way, we can let the three go. And that's an okay pass. It's a little bit risky. But we're going to probably end up playing a two, four, six, eight hand. 
we've got a six crack. Now here, oh, we also have a two, a two BM. We could play two BM, four BM, six, eight crack. No gaps, two multiples. This would be the third hand down on the right under two, four, six, eight, right there. Two, four, oops. So basically two, four BM, six, eight crack. So I probably would focus on that. Even though this seven crack looks pretty, we have far more or even tiles than we do consecutive run. So I would stick with evens and I would let the seven go. I'd probably let the dragon go. And then I would pick one more tile we can let go of. We have two, four, six and two, six, eight. We actually have potential for the pair hand. Third hand from the bottom under singles and pairs. Singles and pairs, number four, in other words. Probably what I would do here is let the four dot go. Seven, four, dragon. It's a little bit risky because the four and the dragon correspond, but you just want to mitigate the risk. Like if we decided instead to do the six, then you would be passing a six, seven. That's a little bit more risky. So I would pass the four because you're not going to use, really, there's only one way to use the four dot with a seven, four, five, six, seven, or three, four, five, six, seven, maybe second hand down or the fourth hand down under consecutive run, one of, or maybe two hands. So you just mitigate the risk. Okay, we have a six BM, four crack. Now here we need to make a choice if we want to continue the Charleston. I would, I would probably continue the Charleston. We're in between the pair hand and two, four, six, eight, Pung Kong, Pung Kong. I think what I would do here is continue. Let's see here. Two, four, six, eight. We're so close to that pair hand. But you know what? That pair hand, if we played the pair hand, two, four, six, we have no eight, ma'am. We'd need the two crack to be a pair. No, no, no. That's a single. We'd have to throw away a pair of twos. I, I would not do that. So we're not going to play the pair hand. Plus, we have no eight, ma'am. So I would play two, four, six, eight, Pung Kong. And that would free up discards. So you want to make choices that would free up discards so that you can continue the Charleston. Two, four, six, eight, Pung Kong, Pung Kong. And we have tiles we can pass over here. I'd probably keep the six, bam. So we're going to keep going. Let's pass the three, the six, and the four. Let's see. We have two, four, bam. Six, eight, crack, six, bam, pair. We don't really need that at the moment. Here we go. Okay, so we have two, three, four coming in a little bit. I think I would just stop there and pass. This is a little bit risky, seven, nine, but it's the best we can do with what we have. Even if we were to, let's say, keep the nine and pass the three, that's the same level of risk. I'd rather keep an option. Because if we get a five ban, we could play two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, five, three, four, five, six. Let's see. We have two, three, four, or two, four, six, eight. Let's let that go. And the three. Two, four, six, eight. This is probably going to be Joker bait. Maybe we'll get a Joker out of that. Okay, we have something a bit interesting here happen. Two, four, six, eight, and one suit. I probably would keep it because it's got a multiple. We could play this third hand down in one suit or two suits. I think I would pass two. I rarely pass flowers. Okay, we ended up with two potential hands, no gaps, lots of multiples, and three discards. I would say because we're in between, we're probably a contender. Okay, now I would discard on the edge, the nine. 
it's very efficient tile. So it's not as useful. We want to try to optimize our potential to get a joker. There's a joker. Okay, so now the two, four, six, eight hand with flowers, you know, if we get a green dragon, that's a big if. We could play the concealed hand. I guess I would keep the flower for a little bit. We have a we would have a gap. I'd rather play two, four, six, eight, third hand down. Let's let the two crack go. Okay, now we have to make a choice. Two, four, six, eight in one suit, two, four, six, eight in two suits. Either way, we can pung the two. And I would, because we have a gap, no green for the concealed hand. So I would let that go and go with what we have no gaps and strength with our multiples. So I would call for a pun and let the flower go. So we're still in between two, four, six, eight and one suit or two, four, six, eight and two suits. At the moment, we don't have to make a choice. We got another joker. Okay, now here we have to make a choice. So we could Kong that and we would need to use a joker. We still need to Kong the four bam. So maybe we could use the joker there, but then we wouldn't be able to do anything with the six cracks. So I kind of play it out in my head of what could happen next. If we wait on that, we could still play two, four, six, eight in one suit. And at least we have a six band pair that we could pung. So in this case, we would just need one more good pick. Either way, I would let it go because we have options and a strong option at that. So I would let that go. Now we need to make a choice again, call. I would call for a pung and I would commit because we have no gaps for a pung. And then I would probably let the eight go because nobody wanted it. So we're playing two, four, six, eight in one suit. We need one good pick. Oh, wrong suit. Bummer. Okay, we're looking for an eight bam or another joker. One bam. How's my sound? Is my sound okay? Okay, we can call that for Kong. We're going to use one of our jokers. And now we just need one more good pick. And of course, everybody knows what we're playing, but that's okay. Let's see, we're at 74 tiles, so we're in the beginning of the middle game. There's a joker for grabs right there. Two crack was discarded. Nobody wanted it. No six cracks are out. Let's throw that. Nine bam is out. That's out right here in a pung. That's our tile, but we can use jokers. Three crack. I don't think we're at 65 tiles. Let's let the two go. We're at the middle of the game, 64 tiles. We're in the very middle of the game. And we can use jokers to help us here. We don't want to hold flowers. Oh, darn. Somebody got it. They were fully concealed, so we didn't know what they were playing. But we got pretty close, one away. Okay, let's play again. All right, now, multiples. We we don't have any multiples. This, this is, there are two ways that you can, you can, focus on at the onset, basically your dealt hand. The first one is if you have multiples, you target the multiple and let that drive your choice or your choices, your plan of action based on a multiple. When you don't have a multiple, you look for the predominant pattern and then you choose a category that will use most of your tiles for whatever that predominant pattern is. So we know we're not going to use the North. That's a single wind, can't use it without any other wins. So that can go. 
really this dragon is probably not very helpful, but I try not to pass white dragons. So then I would look at the rest of my tiles and see what do we have that would use most of our tiles. And I see a run, four, five, six, seven of some kind. So I would let the two go and probably the nine. So you basically just use a process of elimination to identify enough discards to pass. And then you stop the analysis. Don't worry about what hand you're playing. We're gathering. We're playing category level, probably for consecutive run. Now, I just looked at this here. We do have some big odd potential, 579. But 579 in one suit is not going to work with a flower unless we have a dragon, which we don't have. That would be the fourth hand down. Or maybe we could do 5799. I don't think we have enough to work with it. So I would let that go as opposed to passing a dragon. As a matter of fact, if we kept it and passed this white dragon, passing a two crack with a dragon, a white dragon, that's very risky. I wouldn't do it. Okay, here we go. So we have our first multiple. This is where I would reassess completely. Whatever we play, we're going to use the four crack. That is now the new strength of the hand. So then I look at the rest of my tiles and I keep as many as I can to support the four crack. So here we have four, five, six. We could maybe do the seven, but we have no red dragon. So I'd probably let that go. We do have a four and a three. We might be able to use it. Really, we don't need this white dragon. And at this point, because I want to maximize my potential to get keepers, I would let it go because I'm not going to use a white dragon with a four crack. I don't think there's anything we can do. Even, even in the even category, there's one dragon hand with opposite dragons. It wouldn't use a four crack. We might be able to use it, let's say, if we get another four a four dot and play like numbers, but we have no other dragons. I think I would probably let that go with one of the sevens. Let's see, four, five, six, seven. Let's say the seven bam. And then I would probably let either the three dot or the four bam go. Three dot or the four bam probably the three BAM, because we still do have some, a slight potential for like numbers with fours. Okay, now the story changes. We've got a red dragon. That is a corresponding dragon. We could maybe play that third hand down under consecutive run. We could maybe even play the concealed hand, four through seven with the dragon. So I'd probably keep the seven crack and I'd probably keep that red dragon. So we could pass now, let's say one crack seven dot with a four bam. And we're focused on four, five, six, seven of some kind. Okay, so we have a nine, but you don't, you're don't. you not gonna go from a four to a nine. So that's not useful to us. So we have enough tiles to pass. So we don't even have to think about it. You don't have to think about what hand you're playing. You're still gathering to support the four. The four crack is the deciding tile. Okay, now we have this four dot and here's a dragon. If we get that four bam back, we might be able to switch to like numbers. I would pass the one and the two and then I would make a choice. Okay, bye Karen. Okay, so we have to make a choice now. Four, five, six, seven. It is super weak if we play that concealed hand. I would probably let the seven go or actually keep the seven and pass the six. No, that would leave a gap. I'd let the seven go because at least we can use jokers if we decide to play the concealed hand. We could always use jokers for the seven. 
but you can't for the six because we need a pair there. Okay, now here we have north one seven. We don't need any of those. All right, we've got a two. Here's two, four, six coming in a little bit. We have no eight, so I wouldn't be too distracted by two, four, six, eight. But there is some potential there for the concealed hand. We might still get that four bam. Since we have no eight, I think I would let that go because we could, we do have a potential to get the four bam. We didn't get it, but that's okay. We've got options. We're going to let that go. We don't want wins. I start there usually, and then I discard edge tiles, the ones and the nines. We're good. North. That'll be a good discard. South. Okay, so seven crack is out. Somebody kept that seven crack. Red dragon. Okay, now we have a pair in there. I would at this point give up on the like number hand with dragons and focus on probably four or five dragon. And then let these, these be our discards over here. Probably I would let that nine crack go. It was already discarded. Four or five dragon, third hand down. No gaps, two multiples. Two dot, that's really not helpful. I like to throw year discard year tiles. There are two white dragons out, so nobody's playing the big hand, the big year hand in singles and pairs. Okay, here we go. Six dot. Yeah, we don't need that at all. I'm still kind of holding out on the four dot and the green dragon because we, if we get a four band, we could still maybe make it work. However, somebody kept that four band that we let go of. Let's, let's discard the one dot. It's on the edge. Not useful to us at all. So that'll be a good discard. Okay, now we're back to two, two, four, six, eight potential in here if we get the eight crack, but that would be a gap. So you want to minimize that as an option. Try not to be distracted by pretty things. Yeah, we don't want that. Nine man. So probably that that two, four, six, eight option. I would probably just let it go. Because we would need a joker. Or no, no, no. That six, that six crack would be a pair for the concealed hand. And that's what we would need to use that red dragon. Now, there's something interesting here that changed things a little bit. Here's two, three, four, five dragon. So we could maybe keep the two and help us with that concealed hand. Okay, five bam, pung with a joker. Oh, now there's a six crack. So that would be two pair in hand for the concealed hand. We would have a gap, but we do have joker. So we could use for the eight. Let's let the four dot go, or maybe this green dragon. So we can do two, three, four, five, three, four, five, six. Or two, four, six, eight with the dragon concealed. That's our tile, but we're concealed. Eight dot we don't need. We don't need that. We already let it go. Oh, there's there's an exposure with jokers. Two jokers up for grabs. Okay, five crack. So I would give up on the even hand. So we have three, four, five, six, no gaps, and we can use jokers to help us maybe with that three. 
we're one discard away from the concealed consecutive hand. We could still maybe do four, five, or five, six dragon. Let's see here. There's one six crack out. One. Oh, we don't need a worst. No six band. We don't need that. Nine dot. We don't need. We're good there. Okay, now we're playing a concealed hand, although we could switch to that third hand down. But I would stick with this because look at all the multiples we have here using the concealed hand. I would, I would ignore that. We still need a flower, so it's a little bit risky. There it is. All right. We are ready to win at 36 tiles remaining. We're in the end game now but we're ready to win on a three crack or a six. Five, we got it. So there we have three, four, five, six concealed. We got it. Ah, it's nice to win at least once. Okay, three, four, five, six dragon concealed hand and we targeted multiples kept the predominant pattern consecutive run we were in between two four six eight but we had a gap no eight so went with consecutive run okay let's do it again all right we have a, a pair of green dragons and a pung of nine dots so we're going to try to use them both if we can it's probably not very likely we, in order to use the green dragon with a nine dot, we wouldn't even be able to use the nine dot pung. Oh, thank you, Candace. Thank you, Sue. Thank you, Evelyn. This green dragon, I don't know if that's going to be very helpful. We do have some like number potential. And we do have some, let's see, the north can go, the two can go. Sometimes it's better to do a process of elimination on the other side, the discard side, to expedite the game, to, to, to quicken the game. We, we need to pass. So instead of trying to figure out what hand you're playing, instead just try to identify your discards. So we need one more discard. With nines, we could maybe play a three, six, nine hand or an odd hand. So maybe keep these fives. So let's just see what happens. We'll let the five dot go. Okay, there's another nine. Here's west one. With no three, this six is not helpful. That three dot would be a gap for three, six, nine. So I'd probably focus on nines, like numbers with nines even, because we have a nine bam and a nine crack. We wouldn't be able to use both joke uh, dragons, but that's okay. There's a nine bam, another multiple. We do have a green dragon in here. So now we have two multiples with a flower, five, seven, nine dragon. Fourth hand down on the right. We don't need the south. We don't need the five. Now we have to make a choice. This is when you have to pick a hand. So we're in between like numbers with nines. We could also maybe do five, seven, nine, nine. Probably what I would do if this were my hand, I would let a green dragon go because the seven bam is super weak. We need a pair for that. And we need a pair of flowers. So we have two singles that need to be pairs. I'd rather focus on maybe like numbers with nines. I would let the dragon go. Another nine. There's a dra another dragon, but I don't think so. So now that we have all these nines, I would let the five, seven go and keep going. Like that. Like numbers with nines. 
no keepers. We did end up getting a three. I think a five, three would be better here. Okay, no keepers here. We can pass four, eight, six. One of each suit. Okay, no keepers, but we have discards. So we can pass fully. A three and an eight can go. Look, we got a keeper. I would probably play like numbers with nines, Kongs. But I would keep the dragons for a little while. Because we could maybe discard a nine dot and use the dragons. We have three discards. I'd say we're a front runner on this one. We can't call anything yet. And we might even be playing the concealed hand. This de depends on what we draw. We're not ready to call. We have a hand with no gaps, though. Let's see. Let's let the four go. We do have some potential for a, uh, a three, six, nine hand, but it's it's super, super weak. Three dot, six crack, red dragon. And we would have to throw away two pair. I wouldn't do that. I'd rather leverage the pairs. Okay, so let's throw six. We're playing like numbers probably, maybe the dragon hand. So we're not going to, we can't do anything with that nine crack. Flower, that's a keeper. I'd probably try for the con the concealed like number hand. We need a white dragon. We've got a pair of flowers. We need a white dragon. Don't need a seven. We really only have one discard. Unless we get, well, we need a white dragon in here, really, would be ideal. Okay, pure Kongs to the left. They could be doing five, seven, nine, but I doubt it because we have all the nine dots. So that means they're doing, uh, they could be doing the six dot in there, five, six, seven, but they could also be doing, Four, five, crack, six, seven, bam. Hong Kong, Hong Kong. Okay, so this will be telling six, bam. So that's what they're doing. They need a four, crack. Another flower. So I would let the dragons go. And we're, that would just mean that we need a joker. But we have now a potential Kong here with the flower. Oh, man, that's risky. You always want to try to leave a joker exposed for somebody. They could have a pure hand over there. There's a joker up for grabs. Oh, we don't need a six. They're playing six, seven, four, five, six, seven. They got it. We have jokers, but look at our beautiful hand here. We just needed to con the flower and then a, a joker for the one of the nines. So we came along well. It was it was well, it was a good effort. Okay, so let's play again. All right, now we've got a couple of jokers and we have two pair, the seven bam and a four crack. So I would hold both of them. The only way we can use a four crack with a seven bam is if we play four, five crack, six, seven bam. Maybe we could do three, four, five, two, three, four, no, three, four, five, six, seven, but probably not. I would let that little two go that we can't use with any way we slice that. And then probably I would let the nine go. We could maybe do four, five, six, seven in one suit and let the four crack go or use it as joker bait. But you don't want to be focused on joker bait during the Charleston because you have to get it all the way to six, the, the halfway mark. That's a long way to hold a pair you don't need. 
So we have four, five, six, seven, no gaps. And that's what I would focus on. So that four crack probably will be broken up. We got a four bam. So I would break up the four crack. It is a multiple, but we've got a seven bam that also can be used with a four bam pung. So four bam, five bam, pung kong, six bam, seven, pung kong. So I would break up that four. Go with the most of your multiples. We got a keeper. And we can keep going. We have three tiles to pass. Don't stop the Charleston if you have three tiles. If you give up, like it, it, let's say we get a keeper. We would let something go that we can make up with a joker or a call. If that tile gets discarded, we could pung or calm. So let's see what happens. No keepers. This is going to require us to pass risky two nines. But our hand development is to such a degree or it's, it's so well developed that we can risk a pass like that. So when you're working on hand development during the Charleston, your passes are probably going to get more and more risky. And that's okay. It's part of the game. You can risk something like this if you have a well-developed hand. And we do. We're one away from set. Because we could, we could Kong the five or Pung the six and we can Kong the seven. We need one good pick. So we can risk passing like numbers. No keepers here. We can let the eight go. Okay, now you might think, oh, look at that. That looks so pretty. Four, five, six, seven, nine with a green. It looks pretty, but it means nothing because we have no eight bam. So that nine bam in the green dragon, not helpful. Now the green dragon, we could potentially keep it and hope for a flower, but that's a pair gap. I would rather play the second hand down, no gaps. Go with the options with no gaps. Okay, we can pass three. We have three discards. Because we're playing Pung Kong, Pung Kong, I'd say we're a front runner. Good thing we don't need flowers. And I would discard the wins. We don't need wins. We got our keeper. And now we're set. We could Kong the, the five and we could Pung the six. We could Kong the seven. We're ready to go. We have two discards. Confirmed front runner now. Let's see here. Let's let the one go. Two bam. It's out. We're locked. I, I think we're not locked in per se, but we have a hand with no gaps and we're, we're set. We can call for everything. So I wouldn't be distracted by one suit options. I would stick with what we have. We're two away from a, a winning hand. And files can go. We keep getting wins. A lot of okay, here we go. We'll call for a con. We're good there. We're good. Five dot is out. Let's let the six go. We're almost at the halfway mark. 60 tiles is the halfway mark. One bam is out. We're at 50 tiles. We need to start thinking about our last discard before we win. Okay, one crack nobody wants. Wants the one bam either. Joker. All right, we're ready to win on a five bam or a six bam. Double weight. Whoa, don't need a flower. We're going into the end game after this next pick. 
we're ready to win by the end of the third wall, which is a really good goal. We're good. No, we we're pung. We have a pung there. We we need a kong of fives and a pung of sixes. So we're good to go here. We're ready to win on either a five bm or a six bm. It's interesting that the robots don't have exposures. There's one, and that six dot is available. Okay, four dot also available. White dragon. Oh, I was a little nervous to throw that, but we're ready to win. I play to win. Eight dot. Okay. Interesting. The player, well, this will be interesting to see who has our tiles. We're looking for a five BAM or a six BAM. Second hand down in one suit under consecutive run. Twelve tiles left. We have four picks each. There we go. All right. So Mahjong. Four, five, six, seven. Hong Kong, Hong Kong. Three, four, five, six. They have a pair of sixes over there. Two, four, six, eight of some kind. They have three bam pair on the right. Note they're playing a gap hand. They have no six bam. On the left, one, two, three, four, three, five, five. So they have jokers. All right, here we go. We'll play two more games, I think. All right, now <clears throat> we have one pair. Target the pair. Target the multiple, because it could be a pung. Two dot. Whatever we do, we're going to use the two dot. Start there. Look at what you have left over and keep as many tiles you can and play a category that uses most of your tiles supporting the multiple. So we have a three, we have a one, we could maybe do one, two, three. Probably the East can go. We have no four, otherwise I would consider maybe playing evens, two, four, six, eight but we have no four. I would probably let the seven and the eight go and keep the fives because we could maybe play a little odd and let the two go or maybe do two, three, four, five of some kind. Okay, we have a pair of sixes. Here's a pair of fives. So now let's just reassess. This is where anytime you develop a new multiple, you reassess. The South can go for sure. I think the one can go for sure. And then we have two, three, five, six. Those we're not going to be able to use together, but we do have here five, six dot, five, six bam. Probably what I would do is let the seven go. And most likely we're going to play the six hand down under consecutive run. Five, six, five, six, no gaps. Here's a four. We could do, let's see here. That's really not very helpful. The dragon, we don't need. The four, not very helpful. The five, six, and dots, they're driving the hand right now. That that is the the that is the target. So you want to let that using those two consecutive pairs drive the decisions. We don't need that four bam even though it's in the range of three, four, five, six, we don't have anything to get from the four BAM to the five, six. Like we would need a three BAM, for example, a two BAM. I, yeah, not helpful. Okay, now we have a seven, five, six, seven. We want to definitely keep going. We have two discards and now we need to pick something else to go. I would focus on five, six, 
of some kind and probably end up breaking up that two. I think the three, let's see, five, six, seven, five, six, five, six, no gaps. Let's let the seven go. The reason is because if we get a four dot, we could do three, four, five, six, Pung Kong. And we already have a hand with no gaps, five, six, five, six. It's weak, but it's it's there and it's we have no gaps. Okay, so there's a seven dot. So now we have five, six, seven. North can go eight and three. That can all go, really. The eight crack, not very helpful with a five, six, seven in one suit. Okay, now we have, let's just kind of reassess a little bit here. Four, five, six, four, five, six, seven in bams, five, six, seven in dots, and a six crack. Five, six, five, six, no gaps. So probably what I would do here, I would let the six go, the four, and then I would probably see if we can use that two for joker bait and play five, six, five, six. Maybe we even keep now. If we get a four dot, we could do four, five, six, seven in one suit. Or even if we get an eight dot, we could do five, six, seven, eight. Okay, no keepers. We would pass three here probably. That is a little bit risky, but I'm okay with that. We have a hand with no gaps. Okay, no keepers. We have three discards and joker bait. Actually, we have four. That seven dot is not helpful. Four discards with joker bait. I'd say probably we're an uh, underdog on this one because we won't know yet if this two is going to be helpful in our five, six in BAMs is super weak. So, so let's just see if we can get some keepers. There's one. Let's let the North go. So, what? Nobody's playing wins. Let's let the eight, or uh, let's see. Yeah, I guess so. I'm still kind of hoping we maybe get a four dot or an eight dot. Seven dot. You don't want to make decisions based on hope. You want to do calculated risk. There we go. Five, six, seven, eight. So now we have options. Second hand down in one suit or two. There we go. So that made the decision for us, a multiple. We can now let this go. And now we can maybe use this joker bait when we get to 60 tiles remaining. Five, six, seven, eight, pong, 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 pong. And incidentally, we've played this a couple of times today. So I just want to say, you might think, I don't want to play consecutive run all the time. The thing is, is that it is a powerful category and we're all in this game to win it. Any win is a good win. So just because we won a Pung Kong, Pung Kong hand, I don't think that should drive you away from playing that hand again. Everyone's in it to win it. So if you have a potential to win another a hand that you already won, go for it. Because that's the name of the game, Mahjong. You want to be able to say Mahjong. So we're going to play Pung Kong, Pung Kong. So we're looking for five, five dot, six dot, seven dot, eight. Five, six, seven, eight. It's okay to play the same one if that's the way the tiles go. Leverage the trend. Oh, well, now that's interesting. Now we can maybe consider five through nine, although that nine dot needs to be a pair. There's a couple jokers up for grabs. So now we have option an option for the first hand under consecutive run. Okay, we're at three tiles. We want to try to get the two dot to uh, 60 tiles. That is the sweet spot for joker game.
Okay, now here we have to make a choice. We have a hand with no gaps. And we do have two weaknesses, but we could Kong that for a pure Kong. So I would call. We have a hand with no gaps. I would play five, six, seven, eight. Pung Kong, Pung Kong. We'll call. We're going to Kong. Okay, now we're at 64 tiles. Nine dot. Okay, we're going to throw the two next. Now, oh, there it is. So let's see if so, if Agatha takes it. No, so that's lose. It's lost its power. Oh, Joker exchange. Thank you. Okay, now we have one one discard. We're still in the middle game. Fifty. When we get down to forty one tiles, that is the last tile in the middle game. We don't need a white dragon. We're ready to pump. Four bam. We don't need that. Nobody wants the two dots, so we'll hold that for a while. We're looking for a five or a seven. Oh, they got our joker. There's still one up for grabs here to the right. One dot. There are two two dots out. One, two, yeah, so the two dot is fine. We're in the end game now. One crack. Okay, none of these are out. This one's going to be risky. But I would play to win. We're ready to pung. Oh, flower. Uh-oh. There's only one out. Hold your breath. We got away with it. Okay, now there's a hand up for grabs. So since that's a two there, I'd probably try to swap this out as a discard. Seven crack. I only see one seven crack out. Two dot, there are two. I think I would throw the two. We don't know what they're doing over here on the left. Okay, so they're doing six, seven, eight, nine, Pung Kong, six, seven. They need that seven crack. We can call and I would discard it. So they're not ready yet, thankfully, but we're ready to win now. There it is, Marshawn. We got it in a nick of time. Look at 79, they're ready to win. On the left, they have a pair to get rid of. Over to the right, they have, ooh, three discards with a flower. Okay, we can play again. Hi, Deborah, welcome. Okay, here we have a pair of fives. So whatever we play, we're gonna use the pair of fives. Target the multiple. With the rest of these tiles, we have three, four, five. Three, four, five. Here's a five. We have a one, three, five. So we could play either little odds or three, four, five. And I would just stop there. And that gives us tiles to pass. You might be, you might think to yourself, well, what about bit, what about odds? Consec if you are in between categories like odds, the seven, nine, and cracks there. We could maybe play, for example, let me show you. We actually have a hand in here with no gaps a couple of ways. We could play one, three dot, five bam Kong, seven, nine. But consecutive run is far more flexible. We have three, four, five flower, no gaps. So even though we have no gaps for the one, three, five mix suit hand, the first one, we have a lot of weaknesses there. We have just as much potential with three, four, five. 
even though it uses fewer tiles, but now we have with the little odd potential in here, we have a lot to work with. So I would let the seven and the nine go and focus on these littler numbers, one through five. So there's a three and a one. So then I would reassess because look what we have, two eights. I would not pass two eights. We have one, three, five, three, four, five, five. I would play little odds of some kind, probably second hand down in two suits. Well, of course, it's both our two suits, Pong Kong, Pong Kong, dots and bams. So I would probably, let's see here. I would probably pass that. Okay, now here we have, let's see, three, eight, eight can go, one can go, three, four. We really, we have a hand with no gaps, so I would focus on that. No gaps in three multiples, one, three dot, three, five, bam, second hand down on the left. Okay, so now let's just reassess a little bit. Every now and again, you might want to reassess because look at what we have. We have all, well, besides the pair of ones, we have a lot of three, four, five. But our pair with the three, five, we have a gap in there, no four. So I would let the evens go and I'd focus on one, three, five. Now here we have two fours and a six. I would not pass that. I think I would probably keep going and pass these three, three, four, six. Okay, so here's a five. We have a lot of little odd potential. We could maybe even use that dragon. Let's see. I think I would let the five go. This is a little bit risky. One, three, five dot might be better up here. But we could do one, three dot, dragon, three, five. This would be the fifth hand down on the left. No keepers. That just means we have tiles to pass. Okay, we got a keeper, five bam. So then I would let the dragon go because a five bam pung, we only need a pair for that fifth hand down. So I would play the second hand down on the left. We can pass three tiles. How about eight, three with a red? Okay, so we ended up with five discards, which means we're probably going to be a contender because we have a hand that's fairly well developed, no gaps. We have one weakness, the three dot. One weakness. So that's why I say I think we can be a contender. We have we've got five discards, though. That's kind of a lot, but... I think we could pung the one, pung the three, and kong the five. All we need is a little help with our three dot. If we have to go into the, like in the next five picks, let's say, if we don't get a keeper for the three dot, I would bump back to underdog. That's really the weakness right there. So let's just see how it goes. Instead of bumping back, maybe we start as, a con as an underdog and bump up the contender. A flower. All right. That does change things a little bit. Let's just keep that green dragon for a bit. If we get a one bam, we can maybe switch to the fourth hand down under odds. I don't think I would keep the two bam though, because we have no four. Either way, we really don't need the four crack. So you can use a process of, elim of elimination to help decide which tile to discard. Joker, I would let the five go. So now we're at 89 tiles remaining. We're, we're not yet in the, in the middle game. The middle game starts at 80 tiles remaining. We're at 89, we have two picks left in the begin game. I would say that we have two discards with Joker bait. So I'd say we're now a contender. Nobody wanted the dragon, so I would let that go.
We're not ready for that. We need to calm. But thankfully, we are playing a Pong Kong hand. So that means we can use strokers. Pong Kong, Pong Kong. So don't be dismayed if your tile goes down. Depending on the type of hand you're playing, you could rely on jokers. It's not ideal. Okay, now here we could pong. So let's let the five dot go. There is a joker up for grabs here. We don't want, okay, now that is our tile. We can call, and I would. You might think to yourself, do I really want to expose this much? If you are a contender, expedite hand development and call the tiles if you have no gaps, which we don't. We need one good pick for the three. So I would push. If you're an underdog, then yes, you might want to wait. But in this case, we're a contender, so we push. And we're at 77 tiles. Let's let the two go. We don't want to hold on to this flower, these flowers for very long. We probably need to swap those out with better discards. Let's see. Let's let's push it one more one more round. That's our tile. We're going to need another joker now. That's okay though. One, two. Let's let the flower go. Oh, nobody took it. I was thinking we could maybe switch to one, two, three, four, but we have no two with this four van. We can keep it for a bit. Oh, we need to let go of this flower. We're at almost the middle of the game. You don't want to hold on to flowers if you're not using them. Okay, so the fours are discards. Okay, we do not need a one bam. We in, we're in the, we're playing another punk kong punk kong hand. There's no shame in that. No shame in that game. Play to win. That's where your tiles take you. Go along. Go along for the ride. We can call Kong. So now let's discard the four. And of course, everybody knows what we're playing, but they don't know how far away we are. We're if we can get a Joker, we'll be ready to win on a three dot. There are two out. Let's see, one here, three dot, one up here. So there's still one left. Two crack. I don't see any of these out. There are a couple four cracks out there. There's another joker up for grabs. There's two. Six bam, six crack. We got a joker. Ready to win on the three. Seven dot. We can throw. Oh, darn. So five through nine, but we got ready to win. Ready to win. It's in the wall. Okay, so let's see. We'll go one more. One more game. Okay, multiples. We have sixes and we have fours. Train your eye to target the multiples because that will quicken your decision making. If you have multiples, start there, four, six. With the remaining tiles, we do have some, two, four, six, eight, but you know what? We have no eight. Therefore, we are not going to play two, four, six, eight. We do have fives and another six. We could maybe do four, five, six, seven, or three, four, five, six. So we're going to keep the sixes and that three. So let's pass those three. You know, we could maybe let a dragon go. I don't think the dragons are going to be helpful with a four, six in two suits. So you might want to parse out dragon so you're not stuck passing two. Also, we have two twos we're not going to use. I would keep, I would probably swap that out and pass those two. That way we're not stuck with two twos for our next pass. If you can think a pass ahead, that's a good practice. Okay. Now we have no gaps for two, four, six, eight. So I would put it back on the table for an option. South one, nine can go. 
We're in between 2468. It looks pretty muddy though. It's really not gelling. I think the 456, 3456 is stronger. We even have a hand in here with no gaps. 34.56 crack. Pung Kong, Pung Kong again. That's okay. Okay, now there's a little development, the six dot. We have tiles we can pass, a little bit risky, but not too bad. Okay, two six. Now is when we reassess. And I would not stop the Charleston. We're in between three, four, five, six, and two, four, six, eight. So one, two, we even have one, two, three, four here, right there. One, two, three, four, or three, four, five, six. We have two sixes also. Let's see, let's just sort by suit. One, two, six in BAMs, two, six paired up, five, six in cracks, three, four, six, eight, pair four, three, four, five, six. That's what I would focus on. So we can let the eight go, the one, and the two. And we're focused on three, four, five, six. We don't know yet what hand we're playing, and that's okay. It's okay to not know what hand you're playing. We're playing some kind of three, four, five, six, or we could do four, five, six, seven. There's a seven, not, not so much though. Our four dot pair, we want to try to use that. No keepers. Although there is a seven, six, seven, five, six, five, six, seven. That's not helpful though. All right. Now we have our two, eight again. Here's a five crack. All right. So I would focus on that five crack. I would probably play three, four, five, six, and use the six bam as joker bait. So the three, the two and the eight. Two, four, six, eight, bams and dots, those can go. So we'll do three. It's going to be risky. Two, four, eight, two, six, eight, either way, it's going to be a bit risky. Okay, so now five, six, we have potential for five, six, five, six. We have a nine that can go. So we're in between three, four, five, six, and five, six, five, six. We have options with two discards. So I'd say that we're a contender one way or another, because we're going to have joker bait if we pick a hand either way, which means we have two discards plus joker bait. That would make us a contender. We don't need a seven dot. We'll pass. We don't need wins. Somebody might be playing wins here. So we want to let them go. We're looking for three, four, five, six, Pung Kong, Pung Kong, or five, six, five, six, Pung Kong, Pung Kong. Third hand from the bottom under consecutive run. We're in between. A flower. I don't think we can. Actually, you know what? We could use that. Four dot, five crack, six bam, mix suit Kongs. Fifth hand down on the right. So let's hold the flower for just a little while. There are three out, which means I don't remember who threw those. So let's wait and see. We don't want to hold on to that for too long. Okay, now there's our wind hand to the right. They could be playing a quint because they didn't take the north. Eight bam, we don't need. We're focused on three, four, five, six of some kind. Or five, six, five, six. We don't have to make a choice until one of our tiles goes down. Okay, now there's the five crack. We have a discard here, the four. Okay, now, now is when we have to make a choice. We could play five, six, five, six, and Kong. We could also play four dot, five crack, six bam, Mixu Kongs. So let's go ahead and call it and Kong. And now we have to make a choice of what to discard. I say we discard the flower 
because that we need a pair and it's weak. So we're playing still in between three, four dot. Let's see, it would be actually I would do five, six, five, six, because then we can leverage the pung of fives and the pair of sixes. So that five bam we keep, the four dot is joker bait, and I would let go of the three dot. So we leverage the pung and the pair as opposed to the single in the pair. Even though our five bam is weak, one good pick and we'll be okay. That's our tile, but that's okay. Three crack can go. Okay, two, three over there. Two, three, Kong, Pung. One, two, three, four is what they're doing there. One, two, three, four. In one suit. They got it. Mahjong. Okay, we can probably try to squeeze one in. One, two, three, four. Okay, here we go. All right, this is a, a good one. We have a pair of flowers, but no other multiples in the number tiles. We have one west with it, no other wins. That west is useless. Okay, next we have, we need to look for the predominant pattern. When I have a widespread like this, I look for like numbers because if we have like numbers, that will use multiple tiles towards a category. So in this case, we have two fours and we have two threes. With two fours and two threes, that, sh that shows a bit of a run, three, four, which means I'll keep the two and the one. So we have one, two, three, four, or maybe like numbers, and we're left with tiles we can pass. We do have some two, four, six, eight in here. I suppose we could keep the six and the eight and let the seven go and see what happens. Okay, six bam pair, three dot pair, three, four, two, three, six, eight. We have no two bam, six, eight. We have a three dot pair. So really the six bam, even though it looks good, it's really not helpful. Neither is the, the one dot. We could keep it though, because if we get a nine, we might be able to switch to three, six, nine. Okay, let's see. Um, oh my goodness. Hold on. Okay. Happy birthday, Deborah. We're in a nitty gritty though. So we really aren't supposed to socialize, but happy birthday, just the same. That's exciting. Okay. Three crack. Now we have two multiples of threes. We have two wins West East, really not very helpful. Three, four, two, three, we have two, three, four. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Let's see, we're kind of at that decision point here. Two, three, three, four, that really is not helpful. I think what I would do is probably let the four go and break up the six and focus on threes. Because we have no nine. Here's a two and a three. So now we have year potential, actually. Let's keep going. East, six. Okay, now we have to make another choice. We have two, three, two, three. We might be able to play the two, three pair hand. Let's let the four dot go. Now we get the nine. There's a pair of West. I, I think I would risk passing a West. West, south. That's a little bit risky. Here's the three. So we have two, three, three. Like numbers with threes is probably what I would focus on. And I would probably pass two here. Like numbers with threes. We have no white dragon. Two, three. We could probably let one of the twos go. I would probably play like numbers with threes. Okay, but now here's the fours. We do have some potential for the pair hand now. West two, five can go. There's another four. So we have three, four, three, four, no gaps, or like numbers with threes and joker bait with the four dot. 
I'd say we're a contender one way or another. We can maybe even play that pair hand, but we have no four band. Okay, so seven, nine, and cracks can go. Okay, here we go. Joker up for grabs there. Here's a dragon. We can use that if we play like numbers with threes and dragons. Try to keep the tiles you can use in your category. That dragon, that cat, that category, that dragon can be used in like numbers, the concealed hand. So let's see if we can get more dragons. And then we'll let the we'll let the fours go. There's a two three. We have all two, three, four, one dragon. We really have no discards right now. Okay, there's another joker for grabs. We can't call that either way. There's a two, two, three, three, four, two, three, four. I'd let the dragon go. Mm -hmm. We can play two, three, four Mixuit Kongs. We wouldn't be able to use the three dot though. I'd like to use these flowers. White dragon. Here's three, four dragon. Three, four dragon. Let's let the four crack go. Okay, someone got a joker. Wes, this dude over here. Four, we have three flowers now. I would play like numbers with threes and four flowers. The four dot and the two bam are joker bait. The players with nines won't need either one of these, but the player on the left might use the four if they're doing a run with, with a four. So let's let the twos go. North. We don't know what the player on the left is doing yet. Four dot, four dot. Okay. We can use that for like numbers with threes. Now this four dot, if we get a two dot or a three dot, we could maybe, okay, five dot, two five dots are out. So a two dot, if we get a two dot, we could potentially switch to two, three, four Kongs. But I'm thinking like numbers with threes. I would let go of that, the four dots I would throw. Yeah, all down, all going down. Four crack, okay now here. We have three, four, three, four. Just kind of came in right there. I'd let the flower go. And then this three, bam. Okay, so we're not ready to call that. So we switched to three, four, three, four, primarily because of the three, four consecutive pungs. So let's keep getting rid of these flowers. Okay, next the dragon can go. Okay, now that we can pung. All right, we need one good pick for the four crack. We got a joker exchange with our eight dot. Oh, darn, look. We, we were one away. All right, that's going to do it. Is going to do it. Oops. What am I doing? There we go. <laughs> That's going to do it for this Let's Play live stream, Nitty Gritty Basics. I hope that you found it helpful with planning discards. There's a lot of spinning plates, a lot to consider. You want to develop your own hand as the top priority and then watch what happens at the table to help you make a decision for planning discards. Basically, you look at the tiles that are being discarded and the tiles are being exposed so that you know 
how to plan your discards. You're welcome. Thank you so much for the kudos. It was a good day. We had fun and there were a lot of opportunities to learn. If you find that you have loss after loss, try not to focus on loss. Focus on learning. Don't focus on losses. Focus on learning. So I hope you found it helpful. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for sharing about my channel. Thank you, channel members, for joining as channel members to help support Mosh Life. I appreciate you. We're trying to name that little guy. We have several names on the ballot. So maybe we'll be able to do that more on, fr on a Friday night for the Simply Social Let's Play live stream where we hang out and chit chat. The nitty gritty Mondays are only for gameplay with commentary and the topic at hand. So we try not to do any socialization on Mondays. So if you like hanging out and chit chatting, join us on Friday nights, 6 p.m to 8 p.m. for Simply Social Let's Play live stream. We'll be back again in an hour for more discard planning for sabotage. So it's a little bit of a different take on discard planning. Uh, so it really depends, though, on what happens at the table. Let me just double check because it was sabotage and... Uh, Optimize, optimize and sabotage. So basically optimizing for Joker exchange. So we're going to be doing a, another discard planning focused on optimize and sabotage. Optimizing for Joker exchange and sabotaging your opponent's hand if you can. So we'll be back again in about an hour. We'll see you then. Otherwise, check out the reposts shortly thereafter. Thank you, moderators, for helping monitor the chat. If, does anybody have any questions? Let's see. Uh, okay, let's see. Let's see. Okay, let's see. Sorry for asking. But, oh, that's okay, Deborah. Happy birthday. Oh, you're, you're all alone and you're not happy. Oh, no. I understand that. I'm isolated, too. I get that. Virtual hugs for you, Deborah. And happy birthday. I would sing, but you would you would regret it, I'm sure. So I'm not going to sing happy birthday because not it's not good. I can't carry a tune. But happy birthday to you. Uh, let's see. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. There we go. You got the happy birthday song and many more. All right. We'll see you again in about an hour. And I'll go ahead and sign off. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click the little gray bell if you do. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos. And you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next video, may all your picks be keepers. <laughs>